So I'm going to do the problem at the end of today's lecture that I didn't have time to finish. And we were looking at figuring out the sequence of a small peptide. So you're told that it's five amino acids long. And because you did amino acid composition analysis, you know that there's a lysine, there's an alanine, there's an aspartate, an arginine, and a phenylalanine. Not necessarily in that order. You take a sample of the small peptide and you do one round of Edmund degradation. And you get an alanine derivative. You take another sample of your peptide and you expose it to the protease trypsin and trypsin cuts on specifically the carbonyl side of lysine and arginine in a protein. That's something I would tell you in a problem, you don't have to memorize where protease is cut. And when you expose your small peptide to trypsin, you find that you get two dipeptides and a free aspartate. You take another sample of your peptide and you treat it to a different protease called endolysine. This cuts on the carbonyl side of lysine in a protein and this gives you in this experiment a dipeptide and a tripeptide. So given all of the all of these clues essentially, given all your data, what's the sequence of amino acids in this peptide? So we know our peptide is five amino acids long, so I usually draw five little spaces and I fill them in as we go through the problem. So we've got um, five different amino acids, so there are no repeats in our peptide. There's one of each. We do one round of Edmund degradation and we get an alanine derivative. That tells us that alanine must be at the end terminus of our peptide. Remember, you always draw the end terminus on the left and the C terminus on the right. You don't have to label that in your peptides unless you're asked to, but the convention really is that the left side is the end terminus and the right side is always the C terminus. And you should know the Edmund degradation tells you what's at the end terminus. So now you take another sample and you expose it to trypsin and it cuts on the carbonyl side of arginine and lysine. And you get two dipeptides and a free aspartate. So maybe there's a cut here and a cut here and aspartate is over there. So for these types of problems, you draw where you think the cut is and you put your residues in spots and then you see if that makes sense with further clues. So let's go, let's continue with this and see if, if this first guess makes sense. This would be two dipeptides and a free aspartate. Um, that would mean that there's either an arginine or a lysine at that location, or an arginine or a lysine in this location. So let's go on to the next Blue, endolysine cuts on the carbonyl side of lysine and it gives you a dipeptide and a tripeptide. So if lysine is over here, that would give us 
a dipeptide, and a tripeptide with an endolysi digest. Digests are what we call protease treatments. So that actually works pretty nicely with my first guess. We narrowed down the location of lysine. So lysine must be here. And if lysine is there, then we definitely have arginine in the other position. Now we go to our last clue, or sorry, now we go to our last um, spot. There's only one amino acid left that we haven't used. That's phenylalanine. So you fill that in, and you're done. So sometimes these problems take a bit more trial and error than I just showed. But the more you do them, the more the trial and error goes quickly. If you have any questions, please do post on Piazza.